This commercial free knowledge presentation is supported by you. This is a Chinese trench that dates from the Korean War. It's incredible to find this because very little remains of the Korean War. Typically, the Chinese dug these trenches into the heights, which gave the defenders the maximum advantage. This is a gun pit he would use, and you can see the advantage that the defender would have on any attackers. What's remarkable about this position is that it was captured by the Canadians during the action at Chalie. During May and June 1951, the Canadians would join with United Nations forces in a major offensive to drive the communists back into North Korea. And to be successful, they would have to overcome positions such as this and a very determined enemy. I just started running up towards the command post. And I saw this figure looming out of the dark. And then the next thing I saw was something coming through the air. It was a bowling pin grenade that bounced off my chest. And I had two ways to go. I went right, the grenade had gone left. This is the South Gate, and it's one of the few buildings that remains from ancient Korea, and it's even one of the few buildings that remains from the Korea of 1950s. One of the problems in retracing the steps of the Korean War is so much has changed that there's only a few buildings that still remain. This is a 14th century Asian type pagoda, and you can actually see the bullet holes from the occupation of Seoul in 1950 by North Korean forces. And of course, there's one other place we can go, which is the old traditional market. This is the Nam Dae Moon market, and it's a traditional Korean market, much like one of those that you would have seen in the 1950s or during the war. Mind you, the product lines have changed. It has a lot of traditional Korean fare, and I'm going to buy a traditional Korean hot dog on a stick with french fries stuck in the side. It looks like quite a delicacy. I get one of these? Thank you. This is very good for your cholesterol. Markets like this are vanishing in Korea, but of course, during the war and afterwards, this is where all the commerce was done. And it still has a traditional flavor to it, just like the ketchup on my hot dog. Between 1951 and 1953, more than 20,000 Canadians fought in Korea. And although the country has changed dramatically, if we look hard enough, we can still uncover evidence of the war. So during the Korean War, uh, one of the things that everybody talks about, every one of the veterans, is the Korean porters and how they carried all the supplies up the hills. And one of the things they used were these A-frames. And they're still being used today in the market here. I guess you can rent them out and they can come and to deliver product to uh, somebody in the market. But it's amazing that this uh, this is what everybody talks about. And here's an example of one of them. Since June 1950, Korea has been a battleground. A series of fierce battles between United Nations forces and the communist armies of North Korea and China have left the country in ruins and claimed hundreds of thousands of lives.
By the spring of 1951, the communist armies have captured territory south of the 38th parallel. But now the UN is gearing up for a massive counterstroke. Joining the UN forces are thousands of newly arrived Canadian soldiers under the command of Brigadier John Rockingham. This special contingent of volunteers is known as the 25th Canadian Infantry Brigade. We're driving through the valleys where the 25th Canadian Infantry Brigade advanced in May 1951. It was part of the push north towards the 38th parallel and this was the first action for a number of the Canadian battalions, including the 2nd Battalion Royal Canadian Regiment. And with me is Ed Mastronardi, who's coming back to this area for the first time since 1951. And Ed, what was it like for you guys before you came into the line here? Rockingham wanted us all to get into shape. So he, uh, he conceived an exercise called Charlie Horse, which was to be a series of company attacks up the uh, hills just outside of Fuzan. I had uh, 20 scouts and snipers, and we climbed the hill twice a day, and using uh, blank ammunition, uh, we were to be the enemy, the Chinese. Rocky Camp was determined that we weren't going to move anywhere until he felt we were ready. After only two weeks of training, the Canadians are ordered into action and they begin their advance north through the Ponchon Valley, pursuing the fleeing Chinese army. So this is the Ponchon Valley, yes. where you fought. That's right. May 1951, and today it's a resort. And there's hiking trails all through your old battlefield. And a lot of very happy looking people. Women, children. It makes me very happy that I came to see it again. It was different then, though. There wasn't all the vegetation, and uh, because of the, the bombing. And it'd be clear of there, trees. It'd be clear of trees, because with the napalm, they would have burned the trees off. You see? Right. And probably almost halfway down. So you and would then, down. would you go up the crests, or would you go... We, we went up the crests. We followed those ridge lines. Canadians, we were like that. We always looked at the high ground. High ground is a dominant feature. It's the hardest work, but it is the safest way to go. It's worth the sweat. So this is your first taste of battle. It was the first day. On the day the 25th in the afternoon, uh, we came on 407, and I was moving up 407, and I trying to set a good example for the men, I, I took the point. About a third of the way up 407, as I moved around a, a corner, a Chinese soldier came from underneath the boulders. I didn't see him at all. He was just going to shoot me in the back, and my signaler shot him. And I saw these Chinese going down, and I masked like a big smile on her face and said, you're only one. We just started and uh, how close it, I, I had come and it made me realize that, uh, you know, this was going to be serious. They were just trying to slow us down at this point and uh, we thought they would keep doing that. But that turned out not to be the case. They finally stopped and they were going to stop us. By the end of May, the UN push towards North Korea begins to stall. The second RCRs are ordered north to secure the village of Shea Lee and capture the dominating height of Hill 467. But the Canadians are unaware that Shea Lee protects a critical communist supply route and the Chinese are unlikely to give it up without a fight. 